Welcome to the EDPF 50 Day Property Challenge brought to you by Private Property and the EDPF Property Academy. I am Nigel Adrianza and I will be your host over the next 50 days as we assist Jared and Matt L as they enter their property journey. Join us as we teach you how to start your own property portfolio within a 50 day period alongside our celebrity guests. To kick it off, we interviewed Jared and Matt Al on why they wanted to start investing in property, what they expected from the 50 day challenge, and now how we at Private Property and EDPF Academy can help them to reach their goals. Let's hear what Jared had to say when we interviewed him at the Radisson Blue Hotel in Ribic Street, Cape Town. Hey guys, I'm singer, songwriter, and South African Music Award nominee, Jared Ricketts. And if you haven't heard about it before, you're going to hear about it right now. Hello everybody, I am Nigel Adrianza, the founder and CEO of the EDPF Property Academy. Today is the start of our 50-day challenge where we have asked celebrities to go with us on a journey of property investment. All right, so let's introduce our very first celebrity, Jared Ricketts. Jared, please tell us about yourself, where you come from um, and uh, what you're currently doing. Wow, so um, I am a singer, a songwriter, performer, and I'm from the Cape Flats, Athlone specifically. And I'm involved in various different projects. I'm a fashion designer as well. And I have my own company called JBR Productions, where we facilitate virtual corporate experiences across the country. And I'm just so excited to be here. So thank you to you and to uh, EDPF Academy, Private Property, for being willing to share this kind of knowledge. And you know, I'm all about learning. It's going to be new, guys, for me, um, but I'm grateful that you're taking the time to educate us all on this. Fantastic. So, guys, let's get started on our 50-day challenge. And the first question that I have for Jared is to ask him why property and why property investment specifically? For me, it's a conversation I've never really been privy to. I don't come from a background where those conversations are had at the dinner table. Um, upon my own research, it is quite the industry and quite uh, the opportunity to get involved in. And um, for me, it's about creating wealth for myself and my family, and of course, learning. Um, so it's very important to me on that front. Um, I have, I've started developing funny enough, a, a passion for properties. So I've been on private properties um, app and website so many times, earmarking what I would like to, you can dream, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and um, I'm excited because I can finally potentially see this dream come to life. That is amazing. Um, and it's fantastic also to know that Jared comes from the Cape Flats and Athlone specifically, because actually that's where I come Come on, to. guy. <laughs> come on. So we, we both come from the Athlone area. Um, and basically, I, I think we probably have the same experience where property has never been a discussion to be had at the dinner table because our parents actually don't know about property and property investment. And their parents didn't know. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. yeah. And Absolutely. so I think this is so important. Yes, for me, but for all of you who are going to be on this journey to, to become accustomed to, to knowing that this is an opportunity and it's, it's possible for you. You know, we look at something like property portfolios and we think it's unattainable. Mm. You know, how am I going to make this happen? And it's because this kind of information was withheld before yeah you know? absolutely and thanks to guys like you you know they say we've got an uncle in the furniture business so we got an <laughs> uncle in the property business as well so i i can't wait okay that's <laughs> awesome um i i wouldn't like to be called the uncle of the property business but all right let's the go brother the yeah. brother of the property <laughs> yeah business. i think that's a bit better yeah so as we kick off this journey the first thing that i need to understand from you jared before we can help you in the academy is what type of property would you like to invest in and I thought about this long and hard and a property that makes me money. 
is what I want. <laughs> yeah, actually, <absolutely>. yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I want something that I can not have to live in, but something that can generate some kind of capital for me and that can pay itself off quickly. Um, and it will open the door and unlock further opportunities to acquire more property. Okay. So I'm not necessarily looking for that city slicker, you know, ceiling to ground, wall to wall glass. I'm looking for something that uh, anybody would want to rent and that can uh, provide some capital for me. Okay. So let me, let me throw a couple of scenarios out at you and then you can decide which of those sectors you'd like to invest in because cool. the property sector as a whole has different uh, components to it. Okay. So the ones that we normally teach at the academy are things like uh, single residential where you rent it out to a family. Okay. You've got what they call multi-lets where you rent out an, a house or an apartment to many different people and they each have a room or maybe they share a room. There's student accommodation. Okay. And then there's commercial property where you can uh, rent office space or retail or industrial. So those are the things that are, uh, or the areas that we normally would teach mm -hmm. because those are the easier ones to get into. So which of those would you prefer to be involved in? Gosh, I would like the, the first option where a family can rent. Okay. But I'm also interested in somehow uh, investing in property that can support smaller businesses who need the, the, the space to, okay. to operate from. That would be a cool idea. Um, I'm doing so much research and it's so confusing, but um, it's between those two. Okay. I'm passionate awesome. about South African business. I'm passionate about creating property for myself that can develop funds mm -hmm. at a later stage yeah. that families can rent. Um, I haven't really looked into the student accommodation. That sounds exciting as well. So uh, Awesome. Okay, so normally what we would do is we would take you on a, on a journey where you start small, uh -huh. and that would then be a single residential home, which is exactly what you pinpointed already, and then build from there to multi-lets and then to student accommodation, yes. and eventually get into commercial, because commercial is the most complicated and especially in the current climate that we're in, um, where offices are no longer really sought after. Yeah. So we, we definitely will take you on that journey where we start with just the single residential. Awesome stuff. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next thing that we need to look at is what type of value you are looking uh, or what type of uh, investment value you're looking for. So in the first year or two, maybe up to five years, and then again, the value may be five to 10 years. What kind of investment are you looking to achieve? Okay, so listen, of course, I love to have an extensive property portfolio, but you've mentioned you've got to start small. And um, for me, realistically, I can't take something that's beyond my means right now. For sure. To manage because I'm learning firstly. And once I've acquired more knowledge, I can then look at how I can branch out. But definitely uh, an accommodation for family, and maybe within the ballpark figure of 500 to 800,000 rand, something that's manageable to keep the interest rate low and um, a good starting point. I think it's a good footing. I agree. And yeah. with your guidance and yeah. the pool that you're going to give me of people that I can tap into, we can see how far we can push. Fantastic. So even without any education so far, um, Jared has already uh, chosen an, a sector within the property space. Um, that is lucrative, uh, brings good returns, as well as um, is able, he is then able to rent it out quite easily because that is the sought after area in terms of a financial investment. Between 500,000 and about 950,000, that is a very lucrative area to be in or financial uh, space to be in. Okay, fantastic. Then let's talk about medium to long term. So that is where you'd like to start. Mm -hmm. But where would you like to end up in, say, 10 years time? What size of portfolio would you like to have? Wow, I would love to have my own block of apartments. Fantastic. Um, okay. Even develop them myself. Um, if I get to that stage, when I get to that stage, because we're going to get there. Uh, where I can tap into architects, I can really create something. I'm passionate about green, everything green. Mm. Um, so I'd love to see in Cape Town if we could develop more spaces that lend itself to that lifestyle. Fantastic. Um, and sort of, I would love to change the face of how we see um, young people and their attitudes towards purchasing property and maybe making spaces that are a lot more affordable for the younger markets to tap into. Um, uh, 
and, and grow from there. I mean, the, the possibilities endless like this. Mm. Block of apartments um, from there, as I said, getting into the, the property spaces for corporates and businesses um, and seeing if maybe I could merge the two somehow. Mm. What about creating new concepts? So okay. as we move along, I'd like to see how I could find my own niche, mm -hmm. but stay in the spaces that, that keep it lucrative. So the next thing that we need to talk about, Jared, is mm -hmm. um, We've now spoken about the people resources, mm -hmm. um, but now we need to talk about the resources that you yourself will bring. Okay. So on the one hand, we talk about what they call sweat equity. Um, that sweat equity is what you physically bring, um, both in terms of the time, as well as your, uh, your knowledge and understanding, um, and, uh, and what you uh, are able to put together in terms of finding the right deals, etc. We know that you are down for that and we know that you are fully committed to this 50 day challenge and this journey. Uh, what we in addition need to understand is what type of financial resources are you able to bring to the party? Sure. So I've been saving money for a long time. Look, acquiring property was always a part of my plan. I just always wanted to be prepared for when I get the opportunity to sit at table like this and you learn from great people like you um, to unlock all of this and so I've been working tirelessly <laughs> to um, to do what I do as a musician and and, and earn some money to put away um, so that I'm able to, to to put down a deposit of some sort you know and enough money so that once I put down the deposit and I acquire the property that property is then able to unlock something else for me you know excellent so that is absolutely fantastic because if you have your own finances as well, on top of um, possibly using other people's money, you can then build a portfolio that will be able to utilize the equity that is in that property. Mm -hmm. And by equity in a property, we mean what you yourself have put in financially. So you could then purchase your first property using your own money and a bit of a bond maybe. Or, or some other people's money, investors, friends, family, I like whatever. Other people's money. Uh, yeah. So other people's <laughs> money is a phenomenal concept, not just in the property industry, but any business. Mm -hmm. If you have other people's money that you can utilize in your business, you can then grow your business much quicker. And it more especially in the property sector. Because if you buy your first property, you put in some money, you bring in some other people's money, you can then use that equity that you've built up in that first property to purchase the next one and the next one and eventually have your block of flats that you desire. And that's have. valuable because I don't think people know that there's this thing, other people's money. Yeah. And that puts everyone off because you look at a property and you go, how am I going to acquire this? I don't have enough funds, probably don't have a developed credit record yeah. um, to acquire the loan that are needed. And so it's really cool to know that with EVPF, um, there is an opportunity to engage with people who can contribute to unlocking that. Fantastic. Cool. Absolutely. And that is exactly what the Academy is all about. Not only to give you support, um, but also to help unlock those financial opportunities with other people's money. Okay. So the second to last question that I have for you is, what is your ultimate aim within this 50-day challenge that we have started today? Of course, to acquire knowledge, because knowledge is power. Um, when you know better, you can do better. Fantastic. That's yeah. a motto that I live by. And so, not only for myself, but I think it's important that when I acquire this knowledge, that I'm able to share this knowledge with people and help them along to define their journey. Of course, sending them your way, but me having a bit more insight to share with them. That's yeah. very important. Um, I don't like talking about something I don't know about. Fantastic. Okay. And um, obviously to acquire property, that's why I'm here. And whichever one comes first, I'm happy to, to dabble into it. And I'm looking forward to getting the guidance from the academy and to, to see where this takes me. I think this is a great start um, from now to the end of the year into next year where um, we could be sitting together um, comparing property portfolios and saying, wow, Jared, this has been quite a cool journey. Look at you now. Yeah. Started from the bottom. Now I'm on the top floor <laughs> of my own building <laughs> because we can do that. Um, so I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be a lot of fun. And um, property, property, property is what I want to get after these 50 days. And, and 
maybe that be the starting point for greater things. Awesome. And uh, just as a, a side note, as a mentor uh, and somebody who help, loves to help people to build property portfolio, my ultimate goal is to ensure that every single one of the people that has gone through this journey with me actually has a bigger portfolio than I do. Come on. <laughs> okay. So the very last question then, Janet. Yeah. Do you have what it takes for this 50 day challenge? How much time do you have left? Because I'll be here for another hour telling you that I am ready to take this on. And I encourage you to do the same thing. You know, fear should not stop you. And fear is a result of not being prepared and not understanding. But when you have both knowledge and you have a plan, you can take yourself to the next level. And that's, that is what this is all about. So I cannot, cannot wait to see what it looks like at the end of the day. Fantastic. So guys, come and join us on this phenomenal journey, this 50 day challenge. And when you learn from our celebrities, we'd like you to implement that in your own life so that you also can become a property investor. We believe that every person that has the knowledge and understanding of how to start a property portfolio will be able to do so. So come along on this journey with us. Start your own property portfolio but with the learnings that we are going to have over the next 50 days um, and build your own property portfolio. We'd like to thank you for this time that you've spent with us today. Um, this is the first day of our 50 day challenge. We are very excited. And thank you, Jared, for being part of this journey with us. Listen, I'm excited. It's going to be great. Let's get into it. Starting the 50 day celebrity challenge. And so I want to thank you for um, being a part of the conversation and I want to encourage you to continue to stay tuned as we learn how to develop our property portfolio with EDPF Academy and Private Property. And can we just have a round of applause for the set, this gorgeous venue that is the Radisson Blue right here in Cape Town. Thank you for that insightful discussion, Jared. Next up, we have Matt L, where we interviewed her at the Sterkontein Heritage Lodge in the Cradle of Humankind. Let's hear what she has to say about her property journey. So Matt, let's get started. Tell us why it is that you want to invest in property. Thank you so much, Nigel, for such a kind introduction. So, one thing I certainly believe is that school teaches us a lot on how to save, but we're not necessarily taught any practical skills on how to grow capital and how to necessarily build, what is it called? Generational wealth, right? That's the word I was looking for. And for a person like me, who's a radio presenter, who's a DJ, do a lot of things, MC, TV, there's a lot of cash flow that comes in, but that money can go as fast as it comes in. And hence, it's quite important to invest it in something that you know is long-term. Um, the property space, I t definitely believe, is, is a space where if done correctly, because you could invest wrongly, but if done correctly, you could potentially have your money locked in a space where you know it will grow over a long term. Mm, fantastic. So tell us, have you already bought a property? Are you already invested in a property? So fortunately, yes, I am. I do have two properties that I had acquired whilst I was in the corporate space. Not sure yet if it was the best move because I was doing it with quite limited knowledge. However, when we went through a space of lockdown, I was quite grateful that I did that because when there were no gigs, no events, that rental income that I was receiving is what actually kept me afloat. So I'm quite passionate about creatives and artists actually exploring other avenues of where to keep their money invested. That is amazing. And I mean, as we, as we know, or some of us know anyway, within the creative space, People think, yes, you're famous, so you obviously have a lot of money. Tell us what that experience has been like for you. And, and you know, when people look at you and go, you must have a lot of money. <laughs> to be honest, um, it's not all gold that glitters. I think it takes um, long-term planning as well in order for you as a creative to actually make a lot of money. But in the beginning, it's really not that much. 
much. Mm. It's um, it's one gig here and there. Sometimes that gig, you're just breaking even. It's just enough money to get you to the gig and back, just enough money to pay your team. So not so much in the beginning, but of course, if you're passionate and you consistent with whatever you're doing, eventually your brand will hold a presence and you'll attract other brands into your space. And then over a long-term period, you will start to make good money. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question that we did not tell you or beforehand what oh, we, we're going to ask you. Um, <laughs> and, and really that's because you've now told me you've already purchased two properties. So because you've already purchased <clears throat> two properties and the EDPF Academy is more about helping people who know nothing about property to get into the space. Why have you chosen the EDPF Academy then to be part of this program? The reason I say that is because I still believe that there isn't a lot of academies that focus specifically on developing people's property knowledge. Mm. Um, when I was doing that, I was doing it blindly. Yeah. It was something I was trying out. And hence, I specifically said, investing in property is a good idea if done correctly mm. there's a lot of people who find themselves buying property and then they're stuck yeah and it becomes a loss and more of a liability whereas property is an asset yes. if done correctly so one thing i know for sure especially with the edpf is the fact that you impart knowledge on mm -hmm. people you partner people with stakeholders who also impart knowledge on them like accountants like you know lawyers all those things that you obviously need to acquire property because even in the property journey, you're not alone. Yeah. When you get to the bank, how do you ask for credit? What do I need to have with credit? Those things were not taught. Mm. And I know that through the academy, mm. I'll definitely polish those. Fantastic. I'm so glad that you brought that up because um, within the academy, we give you all the tools that you require, whether it be, like you say, lawyers and accountants, architects, quantity surveyors, mm. town planners, engineers, yeah. as well as support in terms of how to raise capital. Mm. So one of the big things that normally is a problem in terms of trying to build a property portfolio for most people in South Africa, or even in the world, is how do I raise capital and where do I find the money? Sure. So let me ask you this question then. When you bought your first two properties, how did you go about raising the capital to purchase those two properties, mm. knowing that in South Africa, most people can't even buy one, one. property? So first of all, it starts with obviously having a good credit score. Yeah. And with that good credit score, I was then able to approach a number of banks. That was the route I had. I did not have cash on hand to be able to do this. So I had to acquire some form of credit mm -hmm. to, in order to be able to buy the property. But this is what makes it more interesting for artists and creatives. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't have that pay slip that you can bring to Correct. the bank so yes. how then do you mm. raise the capital so i think it's going to be quite interesting mm. now that i've transitioned out of a corporate space with a lot of stability yeah. and a lot of um knowing for sure for the next six months i have a salary whereas in the creative space three months you're great two months you're not yeah. another five months you're great so it's just also how do you still then secure mm. that capital with yeah. such a volatile industry we, yeah, which is fantastic <laughs> i mean that is one of the things that we in the property industry love talking about using other people's money and that is one of the things yes. that we're going to be teaching you <laughs> over this this 50-day journey so just to reiterate the 50-day journey we're going to help matt l to build a property portfolio more than the two she just uh, she already has acquired um and using all the tools at her disposal as well as all the tools that we as edpf will help her so your first step into this new environment what is the value of property that you are looking to invest in to start with i think uh looking at uh, the property market especially in terms of coming out of a lockdown and all these things i'm not looking to go anywhere near a million no mm. um to be quite honest my ballpark is between 450 and 650. okay but i'm more centered towards the 450. Um, the only reason I'm saying 450 to 650 is that if the value of the property is 450, then I'm just adding on those extra costs that I'd still mm, need for mm. the transfers and and, and if yeah. any renovation potentially is needed, just factoring that as well. But the property price I'm really pinning for is 450. Fantastic. Listen, we've, we, we're embarking on this journey, but you've already learned quite a bit because of your experience. So um, that'll help you a great deal to reach your goal much quicker than anybody else who starts from scratch. So the next question that I want to ask you, 
property is not a short-term journey. Property is a long-term investment. And a lot of people think property is a get-rich-quick scheme. No, it's not. It is purely a long-term investment. So let's say over the next 10 or 20 years, what is the size of the portfolio you're looking to invest in? Okay, so if I'm going to be part of a 50-day challenge and am well capable of acquiring a property in 50 days, then that would then mean I could potentially at least acquire one property per year, right? Yeah. Two per year, in fact. One maybe every six months. I'd prefer that, maybe even 10. Maybe even 10, <laughs> you know, factoring the fact that we have 365 days. So if I'm going to learn how to do this in 50 days, then I'm definitely going to use that 50 days aggressively moving forward. Fantastic. So... If I was to give it a figure, you know, at half a million, let's say a million a year, 10 years, definitely let's say 10 million. Fantastic. I love that. I absolutely love that. <laughs> so guys, we would like you to follow us on this journey. We would like you to use the methodologies that we are going to showcase over these next 50 days. And we'd like you as the public to also start investing in property and using these methodologies to become property investors yourselves. As we've spoken, we can start small, which we'd prefer for you to do, and then grow your portfolio over 10 to 20 years. And you could very easily build a portfolio of 10, 20, even 30 or 50 million Rand um, using other people's money if you don't have your own. So, Matt Al, yes. are you ready for this journey? I am so ready. I am so excited and I can't wait to start. Excellent. So guys, let's go on this 50 day journey together. Let's join Matt Owl. Let's join the rest of the team and the EDPF Property Academy as we go forth on this 50 day journey. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on this 50 day property challenge journey. Join us again on Monday as we begin to look at how to invest in property with our two celebrities. And Hopefully, we'll be able to help you to start your own investment journey.